So there, did any of you see Mr. Bates versus the post office on TV last week? It's still available online. Mostly, I found it absolutely excellent, heartbreaking um, and uh, beautifully acted by the cast of characters. I do have some questions and you will find out what they are as this progresses. So for those who don't know, it was about the post office scandal and it was indeed a scandal, not least that it happened, but that the government-backed organisation denied it and drove some people to such despair that they actually killed themselves. Let me just give you some background if you're unfamiliar with it. It occurred in the UK between 1999 and 2015, where a new computer system, Horizon, began working for the post office and the Department of Social Security. It was designed to enable integrated payments of social security benefits through post office branches. Now, the Department of Health and Social Security eventually rejected the system because it was so problematic, but the post office continued working with it. By 1999, the company behind Horizon, International Computers Limited, became part of Japanese tech giant Fujitsu. That year, problems began in earnest with Horizon, which wrongly reported financial discrepancies at a number of sub post offices, that is the individual branches around the UK. Now, the post office bosses said the system was robust and required the individual sub postmasters to make good the losses that the system said had arisen at each branch. This resulted in people around the UK losing their lives, their livelihood. Some were convicted and imprisoned. And one man even got out of his car and walked in front of a bus. So deep was his despair at being wrongly accused. The whole thing was a massive lie. These people had done no such thing. There were no fraudsters, not at the sub post offices anyway. There were not only glitches in the system, but it was reported that there were people working in secret at Fujitsu who could remotely access the accounts of these sub post offices and created the losses. They could literally change the figures while the sub postmasters were actually working on their computers. No lie. I mean, it's extraordinary. And the problem about things like this is you would have to prove such a thing. Yet that's exactly what a hardcore group of accused people did. It took them two decades plus, but they managed to get some justice out of this. Led by former sub postmaster Alan Bates, who had refused to sign documents saying that he had been responsible for false accounting. And he just kept, you know, so much correspondence and information that eventually served them all good. And the action group that Alan and others were responsible for were absolutely unwavering in their determination to prove their innocence. And I know what it's like when you're accused of things that you are not responsible for, something boils up inside of you and you become absolutely determined to prove your innocence. And I deal with a lot of innocent people who have been accused of things that they are not guilty of and they can't rest until that until they see some sense of justice and that is what it is like and that was what it was like for these people the post office was ruthless in its pursuit of these sub postmasters it carried out about 900 prosecutions between 2000 and 2015 securing 700 convictions for offences including theft and fraud and sending over 200 people to prison victims not just people these were victims a further 2,800 managed to escape prosecution, but were asked to pay the money back, while others died before their convictions could be reversed or quashed. The stories of some of the victims are utterly heartbreaking. There was Jo Hamilton. She was a lead player in the drama documentary on ITV. She was falsely accused of stealing £36,000 from a village shop in uh, Wom South Wombra, Hampshire. She eventually pleaded guilty to false accounting in fear of going to jail. 
and she was forced to remortgage her house twice, borrow money from friends, take £6,000 in donations from the village who believed her. The villagers believed that she was a decent person. None of them could work out what had gone on, but they knew she wasn't a thief either. And she ended up taking a job cleaning people's houses, just in desperate bid to stay afloat, really. Her conviction was quashed in 2021 when she was found to be a victim of that post office horizon scandal. And that was, as I say, the faulty accounting system. Some of the stories had me weeping. There was Martin Griffiths, whose life became so untenable. He parked up his car, got out of it and walked in front of a bus. Then his wife was gagged from talking about what had happened to them and about this system. And there was victims were pushed into this sort of plea bargain scenario, horrendous scenario for innocent people. Many of them were forced to accept plea bargains where they pled guilty to smaller charges of false accounts counting, which enabled them to avoid going to jail. However, under the deal, these innocent people still had to pay back the tens of thousands that they were accused of stealing, even though they never had. On top of that, many of them were told that they couldn't accuse the computer system of being problematic. I mean, what the actual, right? Which brings me very seriously to accountability, because it's no point in scandals like this being bust wide open if there is no accountability. So let us look at the people who are accountable for this, right? The people at the top of the food chain in the post office and around this scandal who are implicated. Number one has to be Paula of Venels, who was CEO of the post office from 2012 to 2019. Despite presiding over this unmitigated disaster and doing all she could to fight the victims, including obfuscating, giving misleading information to members of parliament and backing the post office in a massively aggressive strategy against the victims, Paula Venels left the post office having been awarded a CBE for her services to the post office and to charity. I joke you not. On top of which, despite her utterly reprehensible behaviour, she was also a parish priest. Now that may speak volumes to you, depending on where you're coming from. Joe Hamilton later said of Paula Venels, if she's got any moral compass, she should give back the CBE. Joe went on to say, in spite of being a vicar, she doesn't seem to have any moral code. Indeed, indeed. Bates versus the post office was public interest TV at its best. It's made many people, because many people were aware that there had been a scandal, but not how deep it was. And this brought it to life. Yes, there were issues with it, of which we will tackle in a minute. But uh, for example, when Paula Venels gave evidence to Parliament in 2015, she said there was no evidence of miscarriages of justice. This is surely false right? Surely false and potentially knowingly so. When Paula Venels left the post office, she was given a £389,000 bonus. She was richly rewarded for her astonishingly horrendous stewardship. She earned £4.9 million, including performance-related bonuses. It beggars belief, right? Venels should absolutely have her CBE removed. She was responsible for sacking a forensic accounting firm who had been brought in to get to the bottom of the scandal. She sacked them just days before they were due to publish their damning findings against her organisation and against the Horizon computer system. But the thing about people like Paula Venels is they never go away quietly. And, you know, really, you'd think that somebody like her, they'd just be grateful to have gotten away with it, right? To have gotten 
off lightly with their role in something as reprehensible as this, right? And, you know, sort of go away, just go away, count your questionable gains. But the fact is they continue to be rewarded in huge and important leadership roles. After the post office scandal, Venels was made chair of an NHS trust. The cabinet office attached to number 10, i.e. parliament, gave her an advisory role, please pass the sick bag, and and retail chains, including Morrison's, gave her £89,000 a year for a non-executive directorship. And she was paid £55,000 by Dunelm to join its board. All of them should hang their heads in collective shame at supporting this individual. It was known what she had overseen by this point, but they continued to reward her absolute disgraceful failure. On top of which, get this, on top of which, the Church of England put her on a committee overseeing ethical investments. I kid you not. And by the way, there is a petition to strip Paula Venels of her CBE. And as I'm recording this, it currently sits at 897,000 476. And I often don't sign petitions because I don't see much point to them. But this one I signed. Oh, yes, I did. That woman was responsible for the destruction of many people's lives. And there is absolutely no way she should have an award for her work. The other post office executives who came out of this very badly and rightly so included the very hard faced Angela van den Bogard, who was the post office's director responsible for handling complaints regarding the Horizon computer system from 2010. She was a major ally of Paula Venels. The pair were referred to as the gruesome twosome in the ITV programme. It was van den Bogard who was massively responsible for the utter misery that the sub postmasters were put through. She was massively criticized by a high court judge for attempting to mislead him. She was all about protecting the brand, the post office, and sod the little people who were being trodden on and who were wrongly accused. These people lack all sort of essential decency. It is horrendous. But Venels was not alone in being rewarded for failure. And it's important to note that one character was interestingly missing from the ITV drama. That was Paula Venels' predecessor, one Adam Crozier, who was CEO from 2003 to 2010 and oversaw the closure of more than 7,000 post office branches, it was Crozier who was in charge when a great deal of the wrongful convictions of the sub postmasters took place. It was also Crozier's post office that responded to early journalistic inquiries about the scandal with deeply aggressive, even threatening denials. Could it be that Adam Crozier was missing from the ITV drama documentary because, because he was a former head of ITV, the channel that made the programme? Is that possible? Crozier, by the way, was put in place at the post office by Tony Blair's government, and you don't get much more bent and immoral than a Tony Blair, do you? Anyway, of course, ITV deny any wrongdoing. That's not what happened, they have been quick to say. The drama, they say, tells the story from the perspective of the sub-postmasters who formed the action group Justice for Sub-Postmasters Alliance and not from the perspective of the post office. That's convenient, isn't it? Frozier should have been mentioned, no question about it. Then there's Jack Straw's wife. Jack Straw... He's a former member of parliament, a thoroughly unpleasant, reprehensible member of parliament who I once had a deeply unpleasant encounter with. Jack Straw has many questions to answer from his time in parliament, as indeed do many members of parliament. But we are talking about Jack Straw and his wife right now. His wife, Alice Perkins, was the chair of the post office at the time, and she had several meetings about the scandal in 
involving the Horizon computer system. A high court judge later pointed out that Perkins and Venels had not given accurate information at the meetings when they were questioned by other MPs. When Perkins left the post office, she claimed it was a more capable and confident place than when she had first joined it. Sure it was. It wasn't until April 2021 when she finally issued an apology for the deep distress her role at the post office had caused people. Too little, too late, mate. The post office fought these victims in an utterly filthy manner, doing all they could to stop the truth from coming out, including redacting information, withholding information, and even accusing a high court judge of being biased when they realized they were losing. Bear in mind who was on the board. Yes, indeed, Alice Perkins. Alice Perkins, Paula Venos, these people have a lot to be responsible for. Right, a lot. Eventually, the post office reached a £58 million settlement with 555 sub-postmasters, which, after millions, was paid to legal expenses. There wasn't a great deal left over. Roughly, it was estimated £20,000 each, which is small compensation for having your lives and livelihoods destroyed. Many have never received anything. Many have been left out of pocket. Many died before receiving any form of justice. But here's the rub. You want to know who paid that compensation? We, the taxpayers, did. Why did the government, in other words, us taxpayers, pay the compensation? Surely Fujitsu should do that. Take it or take it out of Paula Venel's huge pay packet. Any of these people, Perkins, Venel, make them pay. There is a police investigation now as a consequence of the ITV program, but Fujitsu have a huge responsibility here. And who was the UK chief executive and chairman of Fujitsu? Michael Keegan. In 2014, his appointment to the company bragged about his 30 years experience in the IT sector and trumpeting that prior to his role at Fujitsu, he had senior roles at, wait for it, the Royal Mail Group and Post Office Limited. I know you are shocked, right? Keegan has publicly denied any responsibility in the scandal, saying that during his time as CEO, he had only made one decision related to the Horizon computer system, and that was to cancel a new version that was being tendered to the post office. Well, we shall see if he's right, right? Because now more people are aware of how deep this scandal is. It is not going away until there is a real sense of true justice. And you want to know who Michael Keegan is married to? Why? Gillian Keegan. Gillian Keegan is the government's education secretary. These people all run in the same circles, don't they? Michael Keegan currently sits on the advisory board of the Prince's Trust and is a non-executive director of Centerprise, an IT firm. And guess what it's, do you know what? I find this almost impossible to say this without laughing, not because I actually find this humorous, but because it just it just beggars belief on a constant basis. Right. But anyway, guess, guess what company recently won a one million pound contract from the government to do with the schools program. Right. Why? None other than Centerprise. I think people are sick and tired of CEOs and such like getting away with murder, metaphorically speaking, of course, and then being rewarded for failure. I know I am. I agree with Jo Hamilton when she said, they've made people's lives a misery and they've committed crimes. It's not just a computer problem. This is absolute corruption at its worst, state-sponsored corruption. I agree. Yes, it is. And now it's time for people to pay the price for their roles in it. And finally, I want to give a big shout out to everyone who has supported my work this year, including my wonderful patrons at Patreon, link in description below. As I've said before, there are numerous ways to support my work. It doesn't just have to be financial. 
simply by watching, sharing, liking, subscribing, commenting. All of it helps for the algorithms and for getting the word out. I wish you all the most amazing 2024. Thank you for being here. Lots of love.